Hi, it's Dr. Noel Williams, Optimal Health Associates, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. I haven't done any posts for a while, had to get out of the jail box of some check marks or X's or whatever they do on YouTube. So I just stopped because I thought providing further details that we're going to get retrospectively pulled off wasn't helpful. But since COVID is kind of, there's been some changes which I think are interesting scientifically and just in terms of the thought process. But I think there's a, a few things to know about COVID. It's still out there. It's still important, but so is flu, so is RSV, and so is Haemophilus influenza, and mycoplasma, and ureoplasm, walking pneumonia, which we've seen all of. We've seen every possible upper respiratory tract infection over the last month and a half at our office, and we're you know predominantly gynecology and wellness, but we still take care of people. And it's been fairly amazing um, the number of respiratory infections, which begs the question is why are these pediatric infections occurring in adults now? I think that is a subject we will dive into eventually about immune function and immune destruction. Uh, and, you know, is the underlying issue what? I mean, some people say, oh, it's the vaccine. As some people might say it's um, perhaps nutrition and our nutritional status in the country has gotten so bad um, that the mitochondria don't work, so the immune system doesn't work. That, but that's more of a scientific, geeky thing for me to think. But um, there's no question things are out of whack. Um, it's just, just the nature. So things going on with COVID. I think there's been a couple important things that came out. One, when the Vaccine Advisory Committee, um, I think chaired by Paul Uffett from Pennsylvania, okay, the bivalent Omicron vaccine with... Uh, the only evidence of it working was the antibodies went up, um, which again, they are way smarter than me, but I'm a basic person. Uh, antibody titer doesn't matter, um, besides being essentially positive and negative. Um, but what came out this last week is that they had data at Moderna that said the if you got vaccinated with the booster, versus not vaccinated with the booster, but you'd already, both groups had already been received their vaccines, that the infection rate for um, Omicron was 3.6 in the boosted group and 1.9% in the unboosted group, which has been something I've talked about with this original antigenic sin thing for, I mean, the last two and a half years, three years now, I guess we're approaching. And this is exactly what we're talking about. And so the, the FDA advisory committee was very upset that they didn't get this information. But then when questioned, well, would it change your vote? They said no, which is even more embarrassing. It's even more embarrassing. So you have an experimental vaccine, because these are still experimental vaccines. You see this pulse of something that's an established fact in immunology virology and public health about immune dysfunction from too many vaccines in the same area for so where you dumb down your immune system and then it can't recognize the the infectious particle when it lands which is what original antigenic sin is and original antigenic sin and then you see a study that says oh yeah no this could be causing that we have an increase in infection and you're not going to pause okaying something that could make matters worse. That's beyond obscure. And then Paul Offit finally last week said, well, he's no longer recommending the vaccine, which, uh, oh my goodness, which was a, a very positive step. And he tries at times, but... Uh, for people who are healthy or younger or potentially children, because it's not meaningful. Only he's recommended it only for older adults, which again, there's no data to there's no prospective data to support that. That's my number one criticism. There's no prospective data. They will not do a prospective double blinded trial, which would be very easy to do, but they do not want to do it because they know what the data will show. The third thing that's interesting is both um, I, in the infectious disease head at Emory University's hospital in DeKalb, DeKalb, DeKalb. Uh, Georgia and the Tufts uh, Medical Center's infectious disease doctor both came out this week and said that um, there's complete misinformation about, I don't say, they wouldn't say misinformation, they said confusion in the data that's being reported on infections because what's happening in uh, symptomatic infections and 
serious infections and all of that and deaths from COVID because they're reporting everyone who gets hospitalized as a COVID infection, even if they get hospitalized with a car accident because every single patient gets tested and they're doing that at Tufts, they're doing it at Emory, they're doing it all over the country. And the lady or the guy at Tufts said, uh, or sorry, the guy at Emory said approximately 40% or more of the reported cases and deaths had nothing to do with COVID. Um, the um, female physician at Tufts said that it could be up to 90% in some groups that they were, they came in with a broken leg and they had positive COVID and they had a PE and died, but you know, something like that. And they also applied this and she, I think was the one who mentioned when I read the article that um, the pediatric data was the, probably the worst of the group. And so here we had something that was one in a hundred thousand kids were admitted to the hospital and up to, we'll say 40% to 90% of them were admitted for something else. And then they, they got recorded as being admitted for COVID in the data sets. So we're talking about, it's going to one in, so if you had 10 um, and only 40% uh, of them uh, had COVID, we're driving them to the hospital, that'd be four per, per million or one for 250,000. And if it was 90% fall over in for something else, that would be there'd be only one per million. So we okayed an experimental vaccine for something that didn't result in hospitalization with no complications for children, which we know is rates about 20 per 100,000 that are life-threatening. So this whole pattern of stuff is just remains further and further concerning to me. I think you look at the micromessenger RNA vaccines, which I took, I wanna be very clear, based on the data that was presented by the FDA, Moderna, and Pfizer. Um, and you know, I feel lied to, but that's me. Um, I'm glad I got it at the time. And I think, like I said, from the very beginning, we only needed one, but making us get two was stupid. And that's what their own data showed, but whatever. So that's where we are with the COVID vaccine thing. Everyone knows how I feel about it. I do not recommend the vaccine for anyone under any circumstances, because also, as Paul Ofit said, who's the chief of the vaccine advisory committee, it is a losing proposition to keep on trying to catch an infectious disease particle that's mutating as fast as COVID is with a vaccine that's lagging by four to six months. You'll never get there, period. So pushing more and more vaccines, which is the only solution that the FDA and CDC has, which is a failed strategy, and it's an established failed strategy is sad. The true issue, whether you believe the vaccine caused problems or didn't cause problems is why don't we address how to prevent serious illness from infections? It's through healthy measures that are common sense. Exercise, stop smoking, take some vitamins because the nutritional status in, in any industrialized country is terrible. And let's get the mitochondria to work. So that's gonna be my constant theme for forevermore. <laughs> it's just, you know, big impact, small effort, take some vitamin D, take some fish oil, and take a multivitamin. If you want to overachieve, think about, you know, zinc in addition, a little extra 10, 15, 20 milligrams a couple times a week. Think about melatonin. There's a lot more things to do too. Turmeric, but you know, I don't want to get it complicated. Just think, I just need a multivitamin and you'll, that will help. I mean, that's, I mean, higher vitamin D isn't associated with hospitalization for COVID, but I've gone over that a million times. So Kim, anything? else on COVID you think I need to mention or is that about it? I mean, I think the COVID stuff's pretty simple. Um, it's about nutrition. Everything in preventive medicine is about having your cells work and it applies to infectious disease and immunology. And I've given talks about beta cells and T4 helper cells and all that, the T cells and B lymphocytes. And we want strong T cell immunity and not overwrought B cell immunity. So that's what vitamins give you. So anyway, take care. Good night. See you soon.